Assalamu alaikum. In the earlier chapters, we managed to solve problems about mechanics and mechanical systems. We used to study Newton's second law on horizontal path, inclined path, and even projectile systems. But at meantime, we're going to solve other problems and the same problems maybe by applying the concept of energy instead of Newton's laws. This chapter is chapter 11, work and energy. In this chapter, we have different objectives. We're going to deal with the first three objectives. We're going to determine the work done by a constant force, determine the work done by a constant moment, and calculate the average and instantaneous power. So what is power and what is work? Work is a method of energy transfer. When a force performs work, energy is transferred from a body to another or transformed from a form into another. How can we deal with work, energy and force? What is meant by force? and what's meant by work done by a constant force. Are you doing work when you are pushing a car, lifting weights, or even writing essays? Before answering these questions, let's watch this video. Our topic for today is force, work, and energy. Mm. Force is the push or pull applied on an object. It can move a stationary object or stop a moving object. Force can also change the speed and direction of a moving object. If enough force is applied, it can also change the shape or size of an object. Hmm. When force is applied on an object, resulting in the movement of that object, work is said to be done. Work can be calculated using the formula work done is equal to force into distance. The ability or the capacity to do work is called energy. The food that we eat gives us energy to do various activities. Work has a different meaning in physics than it does in everyday usage. That means writing essays, according to physics, is not a work. Let us first explain the physical meaning and then we will distinguish it from everyday meaning in physics. The work done by a constant force in the direction of the displacement d is given as work. F vector equals to F times D such that F is the force, D is the displacement, F expressed in Newton, D expressed in meter and thus 1 in Newton meter is given as 1 joule. So here we have displacement. 
What if I have an oblique force, like this girl who is holding this bag? What if a person pulls a wagon with a constant force along a straight path that makes an angle alpha with the linear displacement AB of the wagon? The component F cosine alpha then is the one which contributes to the work done on the wagon. Therefore, the work done by F is F cosine alpha D. The other part, which is F sine alpha, will do no work on the bag. And there is no motion along the vertical. It's just along the horizontal. Because of this, work is expressed only as this part, which is F cosine alpha. Note that this expression can be written as F vector dot AB vector. This is the scalar dot product of the force and the displacement vector of its point of application. Okay, consider a particle moving along a curvilinear part at mean time, a curvilinear path AB. This particle is acted upon a constant force F whose point of application is displaced from point A to point B. And we can see that here F has the same direction and all the time having same magnitude of a vector. The path AB is the sum of small successive straight paths. Let's call them as AM1, M1, M2, M2, M3, reaching at the end to MI, B. And across each part or small part of the path, we're going to calculate the work done by the force and it will be F, AM1, F, M1, M2, etc. Since F is constant, take it common and you will find that we have summation of vectors AM1, M1, M2, M2, M3, etc reaching M I B and the sum of all these vectors will be exactly the vector A B so we conclude that the work done by a constant force is independent of the path followed by the object and it's equal to the scalar dot product of the force vector and the displacement vector of the point application of the force so whatever the path is we can write F dot A B Another example, we can write, instead of just AB, we can write it as A, C, CB. So AC plus CB is exactly also AB vector. So the work done by a constant force is independent of the path followed. Now consider a system acted upon by a force F making an angle alpha with the displacement vector of its point of application, then this is a kind of summary. Let's see, if this angle alpha lies between 0 and pi over 2 means it is an acute angle, then the sign of the work is positive since cosine will be positive. Now we say, in this case, energy is transferred to the system and the force now is considered as motive. What if alpha is between pi over 2 and pi means it's an obtuse angle? The work then is negative since cosine is negative and the energy is transferred from the system and we say it is a resistive force like friction. If alpha is exactly pi over 2, then there's no work. Work is zero and energy is neither transferred nor gained by the system. And also a force perpendicular to the displacement of its point of application does no work. Like what? Like the weight in a horizontal path. Application 1. Calculate the work done by the force of pulling the bag if its magnitude is F equals to 45 newtons 
and it is making an angle alpha 50 degrees along the displacement D, which is 75 meters. I will give you some minutes. What can we say here? First of all, this is an oblique force. And we have an angle alpha and it's obvious that this angle is acute. Then we should use the expression FD cosine alpha. Replace 45 degrees, 75 cosine angle 50 and the work here is 2170 joules, which is positive. What do we call this force then? Is it motive or resistive? It's motive. And here comes the end of the first part. I will leave you with this application. In the next video, I will show you an example of a work done by a constant force, which is weight.